share with your your family, your friends, and uh, let them know, hey, we we going live, we live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and uh, so let's see what we're going. We're trying to get YouTube going here too. So let's see here. Give me a moment. <laughs> it's my first time uh, doing these. Uh, Live at the same time, so we're trying to get the YouTube up going. So let's see here. YouTube, Facebook. So I hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful day and having a wonderful week. And uh, I'll give us a moment as we look to uh, extend this out to YouTube as well. So let's see the recording. Uh, on this, so I thought I did, and uh, but not so. Anyway, <laughs> I don't, I don't claim, I don't, you know, to, uh, claim to be a uh, technical person anyway. But you know what? I do what I can and what I have to do, and uh, to get the gospel of the kingdom out. So again, thank you for joining me tonight. Again tonight, we're going to continue our exciting and dynamic series of teaching. Where we're talking about. Uh, and, and again, welcome to the Successful You broadcast, and we're talking about just that, you, Successful You. And I want to repeat uh, the master principle and truth and wisdom concerning Successful You is that Successful You is the master key to every door of success and prosperity in your life. I want that to get ingrained in your heart, ingrained in your mind, because it is the truth. Being successfully who God created you to be. Who God created you to be. And uh, and so we're looking at the fact that we looked at Genesis chapter 1, uh, 2, and 3. We're not going back there uh, for time's sake, but we looked at how sin changed all of that. And uh, the first thing that we lost was our identity because Satan uh, challenged that and then he tipped them with, with the fruit, with the idea of being somebody else other than who they already were. And uh, so they were still growing in who they were in God, that being Adam and Eve. And uh, and we understood and we talked about how as we went over to Romans chapter 8, we saw where uh, when man fell, all of creation fell under the weight of that failure, that betrayal, that curse. And I want to reiterate over and over again, you got to understand the importance of your success. I need you to be successful because it has an impact on me. This is why the scripture used the, the, the concept of that we are a body. When you fail, and this is the honest God, and I believe this, you know, and, and, and I, I people are failing every day. I see people, I don't want nobody, I don't pray to nobody, I need my enemy. Amen. But you got to understand, if you're part of the body of Christ, you need to understand that the body is impacted by your failure and your success. That's why you got to understand that when you fail, fulfill your assignment, the expanded ramification of that, the, the worldwide effect of that, that you and I matter to the world, and, and we need to understand that. And so uh, I need you to grasp this revelation and this truth that, you know what, if not for your sake, for your babies, for your your family, for your friend, for your neighbor, uh, for your spouse. Amen. If you can't do it for yourself, find somebody to work with and say, you know what, I got to be successful because of others, if not for myself. But I'm going to tell you something. Once you really understand that and get that, you're going to want to be successful yourself. But the key to success, and what we're going to do in this series, that we're going to, we're going to uh, go back to the corrected version of success. Because true success, Spiritually, mentally, and physically has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with tangible things. True success in life. This is very careful. I'm making a very strong statement. I'm going to back it up and I'm going to stand up. Listen, I'm going to write this check and I've got the funds to catch it. Yeah, and it would not be insufficient. And I'm going to listen and I'm going to have some left when you catch it because I found it in the truth in the word that, listen, that. True success has nothing to do with 
tangible thing. Because there's a lot of failure, got a lot of money. Got a lot of failures. Listen, got a lot of things. But they listen, but the one thing that they missing and that they long for, if you sit down and talk to anybody who got anything worth having, billionaires, millionaires, billionaires, they'll tell you that you themselves is more important than all the wealth that they have. Because nothing, nothing worse than not having you, not not knowing how to be you, not enjoying uh, 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 discovering you and being you. See, and uh, but people can trade that out, and many people are doing it every day. You're trading who you are for what you want, and listen, that's a tragedy. That's what Satan. Lucifer got Adam and Eve to do. He got them to trade who they were for what he wanted. Are you doing the same thing? I promise you, more than likely you are somewhere or another. We all were and are in some ways. You know, I, listen, I'm not going to throw no rocks and bricks at nobody, but I am going to give you some bricks and some mortar to build a new life, a different life. I'm not going to throw them at, them, at you. I'm going to give them to you. One by one, we're going to help you build a new life by discovering. But listen, you, to build a new life, sometimes you got to tear down the old one. Piece by piece. We're going to do that. We're going to begin this journey uh, again tonight. And uh, uh, we're going to do with some practical, practical tools. Uh, but, but let me give you a few wisdom keys of, about success. For those of you who still having uh, maybe a challenge grasping the concept, thinking this is just a motivational speech. A motivation mission. No, I, I want to motivate you, yes, but not for the sake of motivation. I want to, you to be motivated to find who you are. So you've got to deal with some things in order to do that. Here's one of the first thing I want you to understand uh, that we are created beings, spiritual beings. We were created, we were made out of the same stuff that God is made out of, and we are made into His image with the same capacity that he had. So the word says this, God said, let us create them, this male and female. And listen, I'm gonna, I've am i got some I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about real strong, not tonight, about the male and female thing. Because listen, there are no male spirits and no sp female spirits. The gender only has to do with the body, not the spirit. God doesn't call bodies, he calls spirits. And so all this mess and foolishness, let me go on and say it now and get it out of the way, you know, because you're going to hear it over and over again about, you know, can a woman do this? Can a woman be called? And listen to me very careful. Listen to me very careful. That is one of the greatest indictment of ignorance when you got that question about whether a woman can be called to be a leader, to be a preacher, to be anything. Listen, whatever in the kingdom of God, whatever a spirit with the male body can be called to do. A spirit with the female body can be called to do the same thing. Yeah, I said it, and I won't back up. You know, I have preachers come to me. You know, uh, all the time they don't they don't use they don't know more, but they used to. You know, why? Well, because when you understand this, see the Bible says that in Christ, are you in Christ? He said, in Christ, there's neither male nor female, Greek, Jew. Bond or free. See, your 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 financial status, your your racial status, your gender, none of those has any bearing in the kingdom of God. Now, in religion, all of that has a bearing. But oh, I'm glad you asked. No, this ain't about religion. We're not talking about religion. You see, that's why all that stuff got lost. We're talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not about religion, but the kingdom of God, watch this. Is about relationship with the ruler that we may rule on his behalf. Say it again. The kingdom of God is not about religion, but it's about a relationship with the ruler that we may rule on his behalf in the earth. So kingdom is about rulership and relationship with the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's where our journey must begin. Why? Because we are the byproduct of God's creation. We are, the scripture says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are his, we are his, his product of his master craftsmanship. 
listen to me very careful. You gotta understand something. We 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 were made in his image and his likeness. I can't say it enough. You gotta get it in his image and his likeness that you are like God. We read it in the scripture, Psalms 82, where it says, and you are God. But if you don't understand that, he said, you're going to die as mere men. See, you don't want to die and leave this earth having only been a male. You don't want to die have leave this earth only having been a female. When your body dies, let me say it to you like that, because you never die, but your body does. So I corrected myself there. Because my body is not me, and I'm not my body. When my body dies, I continue to be. The gender stuff ceases. That's why in the kingdom of God, God does not deal with us based upon our gender. There is a beautiful purpose and functionality for our gender, but it's earthbound, and it goes no further than earth. And that is, watch this. God gave us our different genders so no one can manipulate the purpose of God and God bringing people with purpose into the earth. Because did you not know that your gender only served the purpose of God sending other people into the earth? So he, he, he brings the two genders together in holy matrimony and through sexuality, which is a very powerful spiritual thing done physically to bring other people into this earth. He attached privilege to it. He attached pleasure to it. But the greatest component of sexuality is purpose. And we're going to talk about that someday. But not right now. I just want to throw that in there so you understand as we make this journey on discovering who you are, that you got to rid yourself of these things. So let me say this to you as, as we begin, and then we're going to go into some more details here. Is this, that to know who I am, I've got to think like a product, and I've got to think about my manufacturer, my creator. I'm the creature. We're the creature. God's the creator. And he said he created the creature like himself and to be able to do what he would do if he was here, giving us the same capacity. Character, image means character. The same character capacity, which means image means we can be holy like God is holy. It means we can be successful like God is successful. It means we can be people of integrity like God is a person of integrity. See, it means whatever God can be, he made it possible for us to be able to be the same. And like this means out of the same stuff that he made that up. What stuff has God made out of? God is spirit. So he made us spirit. So we're born out of him as spirit. Now listen, this has nothing to do with whether or not you save or unsaved. This is true of all people. But salvation is the only way you can really discover that. Okay? The only way you can really discover is that you've got to begin with salvation. Okay? Because salvation is where, where the relations, the restoring of the relationship with the, with the manufacturer and what yourself begins through salvation. But unfortunately, most saved folks don't really understand what salvation is all about. We think it's all about heaven, so we just survive like animals until Jesus comes, wait till the ship come in. No, we're supposed to be fulfilling a kingdom mandate and a kingdom purpose in the earth, but you can't do that until you understand who you are originally. Your original uniqueness, your origin. Did you not know that your origin is not of the earth? Yes, your origin is not of earth. These are things we got to understand in order to begin this journey of discovering who we are. We've got to, we've got to be able to embrace certain mentalities and certain concepts about ourselves that, listen to me very careful, where you were born is not where you're from. I'm going to say it again. Give me time to write that down if you take a note. Where you are born is not where you're from. You know, I was born in America, but I'm not from America. You may be born in Africa, but you're not from Africa. You may be born in Tennessee, but you're not from Tennessee. That's why you gotta understand the difference between living as you was created versus living as you was born. See, where you from, watch this. According to Psalms 127, 
we come from God. Where is God? He's in heaven. Heaven is where you're from. Earth is where you were dropped off at. The spirit was sent to the earth, put in a womb, an earthly womb called a body by way of male and female to give the spirit an earth suit. That's why we have to be put in the womb so our earth suit can develop. And then we come forth out of the womb with the earth suit as spirit being. So we are spirit beings first, then human beings second. Because a human being is nothing but a spirit wearing the earth suit. But once I shed this earth suit, I'm all spirit. Somebody say, I'm all spirit. And that's why it's important to live in the spirit and to live according to the spirit because you can't be who you are without living according to the spirit and living in the spirit. And you can't do those things without being saved. Somebody may be asking, let me just stop right there and say, how do I get saved? You're not saved. Now listen, 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 being saved, going to church don't mean you're saved. Ah. Uh, You've been going to church all your life, don't mean you're saved. See, so being saved, the one of the ways you can, the one of the ways you can tell uh, regarding your salvation is relationship with God. Not the religious things you do in the name of God. Because the devil can do religious things. Anybody can do religious things. But not everybody have a relationship with you. See, if the group that you're part of, I don't care what the name of your group is with. If it's not about a relationship with God, if it's about rules and regulations and religion, then you're missing salvation. You either don't have it, or if you have it, don't understand it. And and, and I would tell you, uh, I know a whole lot of folks have it, don't understand it. Why? Because we, we learn from our environment stuff that's not scripturally based, that's not truth based, and we misdefine and misappropriate our salvation. Because we don't understand it, because we think it's our ticket to heaven. No, it's, watch this, salvation is heaven's ticket to the earth through you. Salvation is heaven's ticket to the earth through you and I. It is not your ticket to heaven. Uh, think about it. Now, going to heaven is a benefit, but that was not the objective of salvation. Read the scripture. Jesus tells you he, he died to restore that which was lost. Heaven was not lost. Man didn't fall from heaven. Uh, he fell from dominion in the earth. Because heaven came to earth and man turned it over. And it came to earth in the form of the kingdom of God. And man turned that over. You read in uh, Matthew forward, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the, you know, by, sent by the Holy Spirit into the desert, be, the desert to be tempted by the devil, he reveals that. Satan says that he said, "Listen, if you bow down and worship me," as he took him up on the pinnacle of the mountain to look down on the kingdom and all this glory, he said, "If you bow down and worship me, I will give this to you because it has been given to me." Where he did get it? Where did he get it from? He got it from Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter three. The kingdom was turned over to them. Why? Because remember, when you lose you, you lose everything that was assigned to you. The kingdom of God was assigned to Adam and Eve, but when they lost who they were, they could not maintain and retain the kingdom of God. Satan knows that. And watch this. He's doing the same thing. Now, watch. To get you to lose who you are, to not know who you are, why you can, why? So that you can lose everything that, that's attached to you that you're supposed to have, or so you, that you never get, never discover all that God has to. And see, watch this. See, most people, I told you I've been doing this for 40 years. I know I look like I'm um, 25, 30. I know. Listen, don't judge. I didn't ask you. That wasn't a question. That was a statement. I didn't ask you a thing. Because I know I look good. I know I look young. Amen. See, this is the kind of stuff about discovering you. Somebody say, oh, that's arrogant, whatever. No, see, you're so used to being down on yourself, you can't handle somebody who's not down on themselves. 
Amen. So listen, be very careful. All right, I'm, I'm just a joke to you. Don't, so don't take that serious. I'm just joking. Whatever. Whatever. Let's just have fun with this. This ain't, this ain't got to be all uh, sad and, 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 you know, stressful and, 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 and tough. No, 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 no. Listen to this. See, when I lose who I am, then I can't have access to everything that's mine to have. That's why it's paramount for you and I to discover who we are because there's much life that you're not experiencing, you're not enjoying because you haven't found you. Once we are restored back, then the kingdom in our lives is restored back. Then we begin to live the life of kingdom as king and queen in the earth. Because that's who you are. Yeah, see, it's all about the kingdom. God is king. Whoever he is, whatever he is, so am I. That's what the word said. The word said, let's take a look at that. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. We'll take a look at that. So very powerful. So very, very, very powerful scripture here that reminds us that we are as he is. This is why. Watch this. Jesus was God in the flesh. And he came that we may become sons of God. And I tell you, when you, when you discover the, you know, what it means to be a son, it means to be equal with God. Yeah. John chapter 5. Go take a look at it. That's why they want to read why they crucified it. That when Jesus said that he called God his father, and the Bible said the Pharisees and scribes, uh, Pharisees and scribes, I mean, came unglued about that, was extremely upset about that. Why? Because they knew what the phrase meant. They understood what the phrase meant, that when you declare to be a son of God, that means you're taking your position to be equal with God, because God made man to be equal with him. Now, notice what I said. I said equal with him, not equal to him. You and I are not equal to God, but we are equal with God. And all that means is God shares who he is and he shares all he has with us. That's what it means to be a son. See, when you have sons and daughters in your family, that means they're equal with you. They don't mean they're equal to you. They'll never be equal to you. That means they have a right to who you are and everything you have. That's what it means to be a son. That's what it means to be a daughter. And so the Pharisees understood that. And so when Jesus said, God, he's my father. They were like, oh, hold up, back up. Did he say that? Why? Because Jesus knew who he was. He, Jesus knew the key to his success in the earth was always remembering and never losing who he was. Jesus never called God master. He never called God God. He called him father. Think about that. In that phrase says that he know who he is. This is very careful. One of the ways that you and I can tell we don't know who we are by the reference we make to God. Because whoever God is, is who you are. If God is father, then you son. Think about it. How often do you call God father? Do you just keep calling him God, God, God? Because all, all, all God basically really means creator of all things. And he's all of that. He's that. But he has a more personal relationship with you. Your, 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 your reference to him should be that of father, son, not creator and product, and creature. See, the animals are creatures, but none of them can call him father. Every man can't call God Father. Why? Because he don't have a restored relationship. See, salvation restores the relationship so we can so we can once again be equal with God. Watch this. I told you to turn. Well, I tell you to turn. First John chapter chapter four. Watch this. First John chapter four read as this. Let's start at verse number um, seventeen. Here in is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is as he is 
talking about Christ, talking about God. So are we in this world. Uh, as he is, so are we. See, I'm not becoming like God. I'm already like God. Now, some of you have a hard time with that. That don't mean I live in perfection. Because remember, nothing is perfect about my body. But spiritually, I'm perfect. Ah, yeah, I said it. I am perfect. You are perfect. Why? Because you're spirit. If you say that was one of the things that will restore the perfection. See? Because when you were unsaved, you were you were not perfect. You were imperfect spiritually and imperfect physically. But when Jesus restored you, and what happened? He lives in you. He abides in you. He abides in your spirit. He's not living in your flesh. He's living in you. And watch this. And by him living in you, he has made you perfect. Perfection has nothing to do with your performance. It has to do with your position in Christ. Uh, think about it. See? You, because we've learned perfection from a performance perspective and from a corner perspective. But when you understand perfection in its originality, it's of a spirit that you are perfect. Because God has made you perfect. You didn't make yourself perfect. I'm perfect because he made me perfect. I'm righteous because he made me righteous. So I live, watch this. I spiritually live out of his perfection. I live out of his righteousness. Though my flesh, my body is unrighteous and imperfect. But remember, my body is not me. And I am not my body. See? So when I'm talking about you, I'm not talking about that flesh. Ah, I'm talking about the real original, the spiritual you. You are as God is. You got to believe that. You got to receive it. Say that I am as God is. So, so listen, so to discover who you are, you got to begin with truth. And there's a lot of truth that we are afraid of. There's a lot of truth that's so uncomfortable. You know why? Because we've gotten so used to living according to lies, superstition, tradition, and opinion that are not based upon truth. And when we hear the truth and see the truth, we have a hard time wrapping our mind around why. Because we cannot separate us from our bodies because we think they're one and the same. Paul said, not I, but my flesh, the sin in my flesh. See, because he was having a struggle oh, at one point in his life understanding why he was doing, physically doing things he was doing because his mind was still geared toward the flesh and not the spirit. That's where this journey of discovering who you are really begins is that, listen, we've got to discover who we are originally spiritually and mentally. Spiritually and mentally is where that begins. And it begins with truth. And the truth of the matter is that we are like God. And that means this, that I have God's DNA. God's DNA. His divine natural attribute. Write that down. I have divine natural attribute. I have God's DNA. Matter of fact, watch this. Uh, there's another scripture here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, that really blows you away. That really, you know, have a hard time. People have a hard time with this one. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. If I don't find it this time, I'm gonna quote it to you, and because uh, I want you to, I want you to understand. I want you to see. Uh, let me see. Y'all bear with me for a moment, because I, I know I'm in deep water. But let me tell you something. I've learned to swim in deep water because 
I'm not an amateur at this. I didn't just, I didn't just come about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me let me, let me say it to you like this. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding what I'm looking for uh, right now. Maybe because y'all got me nervous, and when I'm nervous, I don't see that way. Even though I got on glasses, you know what? Let me say it to you like this. Uh, where's that? And I firmly promise you, I'll find it next time. But here's what it says. It says. That which is born of God cannot sin. Mm. <laughs> ah, think about it. Don't, don't shoot me yet. Don't shoot me. It says, that which is born of God cannot sin. It says, we, we are the seed of God, and we are born of God, and that which is born of God cannot sin. See, your flesh is not born of God, but you are spirit. So according to the scriptures, you cannot sin, but your flesh can. So you have to contend with your flesh sinning. And when your flesh sin, you have to ask for forgiveness on behalf of your flesh, not you. Why? Because the flesh brings things upon itself that you have to contend with. Now, I know that's. That flies in the face of a whole lot of doctrinal stuff. What do we listen? I'm not here to, to mess with people's doctrine. You can believe what you want to believe, but I'm here you understand something. That if I'm like God, then it makes sense. Can God sin? No. No. And he made, watch this. He restored me. I'm born of him. And if I'm of the seed of God, I cannot sin. Now, I know I went way out there with that. I was like, oh, he done going off with some weird teaching, you know, doctrines of demons, whatever. No, no. See, a lot of this stuff we've been believing about ourselves, that's doctrine of demons that come demons. Things that you, that you don't believe about just that God said about you. Watch this. Here's, a, here's another one. Uh, I, I believe it's in, uh, uh, let's see here. First uh, John chap chapter, uh, yeah, First John chapter three says this: Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Uh, what, what love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world, the world knoweth us not. But when you get your teaching from the world and not the word, then you won't know yourself either. Watch this. Because it know it kneweth him not. It kneweth him not. The world didn't know him. That's why they don't know you. But more important, you need to know you, and you can't learn who you are by well the world world. You can only learn it by well the world. The world has one reality. The word has another reality. We're not finished. Let's, let's, let's finish reading here. He said, he said, beloved, now, when, not tomorrow, not in the by and by, not when I get to heaven, not when I get it all together, not when I, uh, when I give it. No, 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 no. Now are we the sons of God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know there's a covenant that comes when you when you get in this revelation of truth about who you are. Your success in this life depends upon this revelation because when you understand this, that you're no longer a black man, a white man, a Hispanic man, you are a spirit man. You can't live in this life victoriously and successfully the way God intended you if it's all about your gender and your race. Do I care about black people? Yes. Do I care about white people? Yes. Well, all of that is earthly stuff. I care about that, but I don't put that first. I am a spirit man before I'm a black man. See, don't judge me by the color of my house. See this beautiful, this beautiful house you're looking at? This chocolate house you're looking at? That's just my house. That ain't me. I'm a spirit man. 
And Yah said it. I'm a spirit man living in a black or colored house. I do not get my identity from my color, nor race or gender. My identity comes from the truth. It comes from who I am spiritually. And once you understand who you are spiritually, then you need to develop your mentality to operate according to your spirituality, not your physicality. I'm going to say it again. Once you understand who you are spiritually, you need to develop your mentality according to your spirituality and not your physicality. I do not disregard my physical life, but my physical life does not dictate to me. I dictate to my physical life. That's why when sickness coming into your body, you have authority over the body, and therefore you got authority over everything in the body. But you got to know you first. Ah, my God. Listen, I know I'm out of time. Let me finish reading the scripture. Watch this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, watch this, y'all, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man, every being that has this hope in him. I'm reading the scripture. I'm reading the word. Purify himself even as he is pure. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? God is pure. He said, now, when you believe this truth about who you are in him, then it purifies you. You become pure as he is pure. I just told you I'm perfect because he's perfect. I'm living out of his perfection. And now I'm pure because he's pure. Why? Because I'm living out of his purity. Not the contamination of my, my flesh is imperfect and contaminated. And God don't judge me according to it. That's why I don't let it dictate to my life. I don't live according to the flesh. I live according to the spirit. I live according to who I am. That's how I live successfully. You. That's how you're going to live successfully. You got the grasp of this. I'm out of time. I'm only supposed to be on 30 minutes, you know, but you know how it gets away from me sometimes. So listen, I just want to come to you before you go to bed tonight. And listen, Pastor Stan will be here every night, Monday through uh, Saturday, every week. Monday through Thursday, successfully you, 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday, Kingdom Enrichment. Oh, my God. You got to, oh, my God. We're going to talk about Kingdom Listen. We're gonna we're gonna deal with a whole lot, and we're gonna tear down some sacred cows. We're gonna get you out of religion and get you into a real relationship. Now you may be saved. Let me talk to you, saved folk. You saved, but you so religious that you don't even like yourself. You 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 can't stand it yourself. That's why you're so frustrated. You're not free. But once you understand the relationship that you have with Father God. Yahweh, Elohim, Jehovah, Jireh. Once you understand that relationship, you will no longer want to be religious. You will have a burning passion to live just like him. And you will learn how to let him live his life through you. When we learn to do that, then we're going to begin to experience the thing that God is in for us now. There's a lot more life for you to enjoy. But it's going to start with discovering who you are, the original you, your original uniqueness. God bless you. I thank you. Listen, if this word's been a blessing to you, if this, I want you, to, I want you to consider partnering with us. Become a partner with me in this kingdom assignment. And let me tell you something. If you do, it's going to help you to release and uncover and unfold your kingdom assignment. As you tap into what I'm doing, and it's of the kingdom, and I promise you, I'm not going to tell you that if you don't, I won't make it. Oh, I'm going to more than make it. I've already made it. I've already been successful. That's not what it's about. I'm just trying to get you to, to, to operate in the principle that you sow into what we're doing here. Because we're going to touch this world with the gospel of the kingdom. 
that God said, you're going to go into the nation and bring out my son, my daughter, who is stuck in religion. And listen, and I'm the man for it. And I've been commissioned like a John the Baptist. It's all I'm going to talk about what is the kingdom of God and your place in it. But I can't talk about the kingdom until I get you free and get you to walk in the kingdom so the kingdom can walk all through your life and you begin to see a royal life manifested in every area of your life. So consider partnering with us. You can see uh, our email address there, uh, T-O-E-M embassy at gmail.com or you can write us our P.O. box. Some on that side, y'all, I'm trying to get uh, over in here. It's on that side. Yeah, it's on that side over there. That side over there. You see that P.O. box. <laughs> All right, man. And, uh, and here's ways on the screen that you can heal. Uh, Zelle, uh, Cash App, PayPal, Givelify. You can go to our website at toemembassy.com. T-O-E-M. Embassy.com. Uh, that website is up, and you can go, and you can sow. And uh, listen, take this journey with me. Become a partner. Become a co partner in prayer and a partner in sowing seed. And as you be, listen, he who waters shall be watered himself. You water this fertile ground. You sow into this fertile ground. Watch the same happen for you. And listen, we as a minister, we sow into others. So when I'm not asking you to do something that we don't do, we sow on a regular basis into various ministries. Why? Because everybody has to participate. And uh, so, again, thank you for joining me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at the same time. God bless you. And remember, it's time to live as you was created. Stop living as you were born. God bless you. I love you. I see you there. Have a good night's sleep.